take the data and uh, use the JESD link and <clears throat> forward it to anyone to win. So I got that project to build, so that's fine. Now I need to test that part. And for testing that part, now I am moving on to Peta Linux. So for Peta Linux, uh, I have completed all the three stages. Now FSBL bootloader, FSBL is, uh, I have built, uh, uh, U-boot is there, that's also built and kernel is built. Now I need to load them via Peta Linux JTAG, Peta Linux tools via JTAG, and then test the module, uh, the test module that uh, Thomas has implemented that has built. So once that's done, <clears throat> uh, then the next step will be to integrate DBBS to JEST ADI and complete the path. Okay. Did you did you say you built your own first stage bootloader? You had to build yeah, one. Everything. Yeah, everything I built on my own. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. The, so yeah. The, well, is there one available from from Xilinx for this yes. particular? Oh, okay. Yes. Xilinx provides a complete image which can be just loaded onto SD card and then. Uh, you can boot uh, uh, the PS part, Zinc part, using that SD card. But I'm building everything on my own because I may need to replace some driver, modify some drivers. So yeah. Yeah, every, the complete system is built on my network. Um, okay. System. Cool. Okay. Any any roadblocks, any resources you need? No, nothing. All good. Uh, just that there was a card contention issue. But yes, yeah, uh, Suoto had a discussion with Suoto. We can uh, upload the image via JTAG. So that's sort of OK. So it sounds like we might need to modify the, the switches on the board for, for JTAG. Uh, Suoto is already using it. So I okay. think it's all good. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, I know that we made some modifications. I know it's th there's a couple of different varieties of ways to, to load. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, if there's any changes that, that need to be made, just let me know. Sure, thank you. Cool, okay. Um, Andre, greetings. Um, please take Hi. the floor. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit late, sorry. Oh no, you're right on time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I what I did last week was basically like consolidate the changes I did to the <laughs> repository. And, and submit it. It it should 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 work. Like if, if you run the script, there uh, basically inside the build Vivado, there's a ZC inside the folder, right? Build Vivado, there's a ZC seven hundred six. Uh, and basically run the script, and it should um, implement only. Hmm. Never mind. It should run the you know, do the the basics, right? So. Um, I need to find a way to, um, like, put the instructions of how to, you know, program, how to run, how to do this kind of stuff, and uh, where, a place to put the Python scripts, um, and that's it. Um, and oh, uh, and then I'm gonna go back to testing. Um, yeah, basically all of configs and all parameters all set of. Uh, all supported modes, basically. Excellent. Is there anything uh, in your way? Any roadblocks or any additional resources that you need? Uh, no, no. I need to get to the. I don't remember what the host name is, but there's a second card that doesn't have the AD stuff. I need to uh, basically log in and try to run and you know, yeah, get that going. Oh uh, yeah, Karapi. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the, any any doc, maybe a raw doc for how to use Petal Linux tools to load image via JTAG, I can just follow it quickly. Uh, I do. I do have a set of commands, and uh, there's a few quirks. Like, mm -hmm. if you're gonna re like boot again, you have mm -hmm. to open the like the debugger thingy mm -hmm. um, and reset the target for some reason. I don't know why that is, but Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I can. I need to put that in, the, in in a wiki. And yeah, anything you can share just quickly. I, I want to yeah. try tomorrow. So yeah, just yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll try. To, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see, Shamandra, you have the floor. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, hey. Um, two. Uh, just uh, small issues. Um, could you, did you have a chance to correspond with Martin Rothfield? 
uh, Michelle. Okay. Yeah. Now that I'm now that I'm back from from travel, uh, I think I now's a good time to strike up uh, some some more serious communication. So. Right. I because will... he and I he and I are kind of like on the same. We are part of the Amrad group. You know, but not. Okay. Uh, we, 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 we're, I mean, he was an Amrad, I was an Amrad, not at the same time, not on the same projects, but interests coincide with FPGA. So, and he's got a tremendous depth of experience in, in uh, former development. I, okay. I don't know, in certain three-letter agencies, which I'm not aware of, yeah. what, whatever he did. Okay, I'll get right um, on it. Um, yeah, um, so um, one of the things that I've been doing, the second thing that I've been doing is going with a bare bones approach. I built a little 1U uh, chassis uh, with a net burner board and a mini Z board and a bread board, all boards. So these are like um, very useful gadgets for, for me to experiment with FPGAs interfacing with the real world. So I have a, a few friendly FAE people from the analog devices, uh, you know, and linear technologies world who want to, um, you know, give me the tips to necessary to draw up circuits, which I can then solder and put it on the breadboard or something so we can actually get say a bpsk transceiver or a or an m17 transceiver right there right under my control basic rtl basic functionality on off testing bit rate whatever i want to do but i'm using it on a mini z platform i guess the mini z you know obviously is a zinc uh, it should support pedal linux i've he heard horror stories and i just recently published my first article on hexter.io and in doing so, one of the people who commented, he actually called me back and he's been tearing his hair out for the year. And MiniZ apparently is not well supported when it comes to running Petal Linux, the full blown version of Petal Linux. You can run something, but you can't run the Wi Fi, you can't run this. It's, it's missing drivers. So I'm not chasing after Wi Fi. I'm just going for basic old processing system plus uh, programmable logic uh, plus some external AD, AD to get RF out. That would be. A fantastic milestone for me, personal development wise. Okay, what what kind of <laughs> advice or or what what answers do you, do you need in order to take your next step? Well, are your designs really heading towards? Um, I mean, is the ORI group's design heading towards dependencies on the Xilinx reference designs? Can Depend it be? Yeah, I mean, is it going to be like only available to be used with the Xilinx branded products? Uh, I think the answer, like the high level answer is really no. Uh, Xilinx is the, the boards that we are uh, using for, for hardware development. Uh, but the goal is to make it as widely used and usable as possible. So I know that's kind of a uh, unsatisfactory answer uh, because we're, we're definitely- um, I mean, I, I, could, I could be a test. I mean, if it's a zinc processor, I mean, Xilinx Z3 mm -hmm. is a zinc processor. So if I have a zinc processor, then Hopefully, I should be able to run some of the sections of the ORI architecture. So, so at what point Open Research Institute's product doesn't become open anymore because I can't run it on a you know no name zinc because it's still a zinc, but it's got its own mm -hmm. ecosystem of drivers, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a it's is a, a a very important topic and something we always have to be mindful about. Does anybody have a, a answer or or reassurance for? Samandra? Well, I, I, I'd like to give an experiment. I mean, I can set up a remote access gateway anytime you guys want to try it just to see mm -hmm. if it runs. Yeah, I that think way that, at least you have a... that would be an excellent experiment to see. Okay. We know that it runs on this very small selection of, of uh, hardware, you know, and if our goal really is to make widely usable HDL and not have it be mired down into the details of a particular uh, architecture, then what you're doing right now is of uh, great use. So. Yeah, and I'm drawing up the circuits for the um, actual AD uh, transceiver to PCB. I'm doing, I'm, I'm learning. Uh, I need it's for my jobs uh, and my future space products. And there's a vacuum chamber, MT, please use a vacuum chamber, somebody, but give us something to do. But the, pro the issue is that I need other people to vet the design. If my okay. design is equivalent to your design, I am happy. I'll give you remote access. I've got oscilloscope remotely, logic analyzer remotely. So remote lab DC. All okay. Right, right on. Okay. I, I, it sounds uh, sounds useful to me. Does anybody have any comments or guidance for for him? So um, you're using the mini Z, right? Well, I have uh, several boards. Um, I have uh, uh, currently in uh, in a test application 
doing graphics, uh, that is a Spartan 7 board. But uh, the Mini Z is free, and I was I just assembled everything. Uh, I was playing with it, so I put it all onto a brass board. It's very well configured. I can give DC power to it. I can interact it with mm -hmm. a large breadboard. Um, I can make a circuit for you that will actually produce RF from uh, any of the I/O pins of the Mini Z. So, so we can. You know, yeah, I uh, I think it, from if I understand correctly, uh, if you take a Block design, for example, yeah. Zynix, right? If you take a block yeah, I, design. I do, do Vivado Vitis very easily, yes. Yeah, the, you only need to basically yeah, basically map where the, the actual pins are. Because like right now I create a project and I select the board and you know the pin out is all yeah. done. I don't have to worry. It, but that would be uh, basically. Yeah, no, I've already done so. I mean, did you, know, yeah. did you uh, notice, Andrew, that I started posting hackster.io. My next article is going to be on the mini Z. I'm, I'm developing a, we've a board file for the mini Z. Okay. Yeah, a real hey. one with all the, uh, well, well, everything. Yeah, I can, like the, the building for this is easy enough. Like the script uh, is basically changing the target. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And well, not running the, th uh, the implement. Now the implement. Yeah, some of the steps might require actually the, the, the pin out. You're, but... you're talking about TCL scripts, right? So we can do some conditional def uh, compilations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, what about uh, the modules in the Petal Linux environment? How much of that is dependent upon the uh, uh, the uh, Xilinx reference architecture, the, the Petal Linux domain? Because uh, on Mini Z so far, people have struggled with Petalinux, but I, I, we, a couple of us have got together. We're working on it. We're working on, pet, uh, you know, the whole Petalinux on Mini Z. Uh, yeah. So I'm using basically the Peak Poke, which is like a shell. Okay. Thing like, uh, from if you look at the Python code, it's sort of like uh, understandable, like you know, right address, whatever. Okay. Um, but underneath is just Peak Poke. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah well, uh, it, like it, obviously, it, the idea is to put the DMA at some point because pickpocket is very, very, very slow. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, it's really open at the moment. Okay. Well, um, I, I, I'd like to offer this mini Z platform as an experiment for you guys, if you want to. Uh, if you if you are done with your primary uh, workflow. At least the second workflow could be, uh, you know, this one. And, I'll, and I, I can put it on a fixed IP address. I can put the you know, IPv6 on it and let you have access to it. No big deal. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about that uh, maybe later today. I think yeah. we'll we'll be able to accommodate that. And and uh, sounds sounds like it might be useful. Yeah. Yeah. I can basically the same I did for the ZC706. I can sort of do a skeleton for the mini Z, and we can sort of start from there. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I even have a, a real Ubuntu machine that could be mm -hmm. utilized as your uh, host, uh, if you wish. I mean, we can talk about it. Let's just continue yeah. this over yeah. your back channel communication. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Of course. So we have, uh, we have Paul, uh, KB5MU. You have the floor. Hello, I didn't have anything except the one agenda item, which has already been covered, which is that I'd like to see a little bit of a write up on how to boot these things with JTAG so they can be shared more easily. So sounds like you guys are already on top of it. Let me know if you need any help. Thank you. All right, and Atilak, you have the floor. Uh, hi, hi, Michelle. Hi, Paul. Uh, good, to, good to be back here, to see all of you. So uh, I haven't, uh, I don't have any specific thing on the FPGA work. Uh, I'm just trying to listen, uh, but I just have a basic doubt in the uh, authentication related work. So if, if, if uh, Michelle or if you guys agree, I wanna uh, ask that question. Okay, and uh, before I think Paul will answer your question, I'll say uh, let's close down the FPGA stand-up meeting. So uh, thank you very much for, for everyone coming. We have plenty to do and talk about. See you next week, if not before, and I'll be on Slack. Well, hello, everybody. I followed up with contacts and conversations from DEF CON and volunteered as an organizer for HAM Expo. We had a number of presenters from Open Research Institute at HAM Expo. 
and we had a lot of really good conversations and meetings at DEF CON and at Ham Expo. There was the ORI board meeting at DEF CON and office hours for Open Rotor and office hours for M17 at Ham Expo. I started training this week on Petalinux, uh, specifically for the version from Xilinx. I uh, started work on a polar code project proposal for deep space work and started advocating for some HDL written for M17. Next week, working on getting signals over the air in the lab from the analog devices dev board, uh, continuing the process of getting equipment moved from Florida and setting up the last details of the lab equipment purchase from the Bay Area from Open Lunar Foundation. Both of these activities will increase the resources of remote labs. So at this point, roadblocks are mainly logistics and handling details on uh, shipping and storage and setting up. Um, and you know, those are those are things, those are challenges and roadblocks that we can work through uh, with additional time and effort 